Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. You know, the Bible says to be fruitful and multiply. That's in, uh, I think, Genesis chapter 1. Um, but it, instead of multiplying, today here in America, we seem to be subtracting and, and dividing families. In the 1960s, you know, the baby boomers were having families and having children. Um, the fertility rate was very healthy. It was high. Um, I think I read a statistic that it was the you know the baby boomers produced about 2.3 children um, in the 1950s. You know today, 2019, the fertility rate is is at an all-time low. You know it, it, um, we are barely producing enough children, or actually we're not even producing enough children to uh, maintain the current population that we have now. You know, some people will argue, well, you know, the world's overpopulated, Sean. You know, we don't, the last thing we need is more human beings and more babies. Um, there are currently, as of 2019, to the best of my knowledge, 7.5 billion people on planet Earth, okay? And a little over 329 million of those people are here living in the United States. And I was thinking this morning, you know, Who's, who is it to blame for the, for the uh, low fertility rates? Do you blame men? Do you blame women? Um, and, you know, I, I came to the conclusion that, you know, it's both. It's both of us, you know. And let me explain my reasoning um, behind this. You know, because women nowadays are taught to delay marriage. You know, that's the new feminist way that uh, has, has been indoctrinated between all of us when we go through the school system. You know, that women are taught, hey, delay your marriage until after you graduate. Get your career first. Get your, get, make sure you got a good, stable job first. You know, which has traditionally, um, historically been a male's uh, role. You know, so feminism is basically now teaching women to go out there and be be men um basically but you know women you know they still hold men to our same historical standards of being a protector being a provider you know um you have to be able to provide for your family so what's happening is women now are actually competing with men to be the providers um because women have told themselves hey don't depend on a man i don't need no man i need a man about as much as a fish needs a bicycle right so um, what's happening is women are actually dragging uh, their own families down. They're dragging the men down. Uh, you see, because it used to be in the past that young women were encouraged to get married young and have children, right? But nowadays they say, no, if you get married young, that's bad. You're bad. If you have kids young, that's bad. You know, don't do that. But, you know... Uh, we all know that women, when they're 15, 16, 17, that's when they're most beautiful, right? That's when uh, people want to start getting sexually active. Uh, it's just natural. So they're, what they're doing, what feminism has taught everybody is to do what's unnatural. You know, don't get married, don't have kids, you know. When, 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 when nature itself tells us that's when we should be doing that, right? And it's even in the Bible, you know, the Bible like I've preached before commands women to get married young, bear children, and guide the house. Um, and ideally, you know, both a uh, man and a woman would be virgins when they get married. Um, I'm not going to go over that message again, but, you know, what society has taught young men and women nowadays is don't get married, don't have kids until you're quote-unquote ready, you know. But what, what it, the Bible says that if you're going to have sex, it has to be in the confines of marriage, meaning um, a man and a woman... They make a covenant between themselves and God and say, hey, we're going to remain faithful to each other, right? We're not going to go sleep around and commit adultery with anybody else. It's just going to be her and I. But in this perverted clown world that we live in today, you know, women are going out there and seeking to be the primary bread, breadwinners, breadwinners, excuse me. And for the first time in history... You know, I remember when I graduated in, in uh, 2005, you know, women have, have just hit equality in the workforce. They just hit equality in, in uh, getting college degrees, you know. So nowadays, you know, women are even uh, super, um, what's the word, 
they're they're excelling more in in college and getting more degrees than men you know and and it's destroying things because women naturally do not want a man who, who who's equal with them right no matter how much equality they want they still want a man who makes more than them um and the problem is you know men don't find higher income women more attractive right when you're 15 16 17 and you're young and beautiful and you still have your virginity that's what men want you know the more money you make woman <laughs> sorry it's not going to make you more attractive to us it's just not um but in our feminized society, which has brainwashed women to go to work, has actually destroyed the families. But, you know, I don't want to keep rambling and beating this dead horse, so what's the point of my video? Say, so what's the point of your video, Sean? Well, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, Without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. My point is, it takes faith for a young girl to get married when she's 14, 15, 16, right? And to trust in God to take care of her. You know, feminism has said, no, 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 don't trust in God to take care of you. You go out there and you provide for yourself. And when you're ready, you can take care of yourself, right? See, when you, when you, when you put your trust in God and you get married young, you know, that takes faith. It takes faith to do that. You know, this is why I believe God found favor in, the, in Mary, the mother of Jesus. Because even though she was young, she was inexperienced, you know, she, I'm sure she was nervous, right? But she obeyed God anyway. She did what God told her to do. She got married young. And, you know, Joseph was just a shepherd. He wasn't a, a, a rich guy, you know, so she wasn't marrying this rich uh, millionaire or something. You know, she was just marrying a poor shepherd guy, right? But she was obeying God, and she said, you know what? God is going to take care of me because I'm doing the right thing. And, it's, and it doesn't matter if my husband makes a lot of money. I'm going to support him, and I'm going to be faithful to him like God told me to do. And God found favor in her, right? And he said, uh, Hail Mary. Uh, well, I'm not going to go over that whole thing, but, you know, the same thing could be said for a man. You know, it takes faith for a man, a young man, who doesn't have many resources, you know, who who uh, doesn't know exactly um, how to raise a family. But, you know, he, he puts his faith in God and says, you know what, as long as I obey God, you know, I can make this happen. You know, just like David. You know, I remember David versus Goliath. You know, David was just a shepherd boy, right? He, he, he wasn't a strong warrior, but he said, you know what, I will take Goliath down. Not because I'm a strong warrior, not because I'm experienced, not because I've done it before, but because I have faith in God. I follow the commandments of the Lord and He will give me victory, right? That's my point of this message, guys. See, what we lost in our modern culture is our faith in God. You know, women think um, they need to have a high-paying job. They need to have a career. They need to have a, a college degree before they're ready to settle down and have kids, right? So in the meantime, what do they do? They go sleep around. They become whores. They become sluts. But what does God say? God says, trust in me obey my commandments you know and i will provide for you i will protect you i will make sure you have everything you need but you have to follow my commandments and god didn't say hey go sleep around go commit adultery you know go, go get go get married uh, old no he said get married young bear children guide the house right our society is foul out of faith with god you know and as a result our young men our young women they're scared to start families because they're not financially uh um stable or whatever you want to call it you know they want to use condoms they want to get uh involved in pornography you know when the reality is they lack faith in god you just lack faith in god if you put your faith in god you don't need the condoms you don't need the pornography you don't need to worry about getting married when you're quote unquote not ready right i remember back when i was uh with my woman you know she asked me a question you know she asked me well when you were in your 20s you know you had your fun, <laughs> and, and so why can't I? You know, as if this was some kind of excuse for her to go and go and sleep around or something, right? Well, first of all, I didn't sleep around in my 20s. I did not do that. Um, but, you know, putting that aside, you know, I, I admit, you know, I didn't put 100% of my faith in God back then. And part of it was because my elders didn't teach me the right way, you know? 
I and you know I'm gonna take the blame too. I didn't search the scriptures like I should have. I should have been reading the Bible and learning for myself. The Bible says, "Study to show thyself approved." Um, but you know, um, you know, I don't want to make excuses. But instead of society teaching us young men to you know get get married, start a family, you know, um, society's pushing men. Uh, to sleep around, you know, and saying, hey, you're not ready for a family yet, so, but, you know, men, we have these natural desires, right, and we still need to uh, um, get our sexual uh, uh, desires out at a young age, especially, and, but, you know, society's telling us the opposite, to go against it. Um, so, you know, I, I tried to warn uh, the woman that I was with, you know, don't be deceived like I was. I said, I went the wrong way. I was deceived. I'm here to teach you now how to go the right way because I care about you and I love you and I, and I want us both to succeed. Um, but, you know, she, she decided to go with the devil. You know, the devil deceived her. She, uh, she said, oh, I'm not ready for children. I don't have a degree yet and I don't have a, an education and I don't have a career yet. And, and okay, you know, um, but, you know, I don't want this, this message to go, to go too long. So I hope you guys get the gist of what I'm saying, you know. Um, it used to be in society where we would push young boys to go out there and earn money fast because we knew that that's what women wanted, that's what women needed, that's what it took to make families. And then we also pushed women to, hey, get married young, maintain your virginity because that's what it's going to take to make families. That's what it's going to take to uh, raise healthy children and, and keep your marriage alive. And, and feminism has destroyed that in men and women, right, nowadays. Um, and I was going to make another point, but I'll save that for another video. Anyways, friends, I'm going to close with, with this message. You know, um, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. You know, those of us who believe in God and we have faith, we have the opportunity to do what is right, okay? But those of us who do not believe in God, you know, they can never possibly please God. It's, it's, it's totally out of... It's impossible because they have no faith whatsoever. You know? Without faith, we don't know what, what's right and wrong. Okay? Excuse me. I'm sorry. I have my notes here and I, I want to um, get this right, this last message. Those of us who don't believe in God, we can't possibly please God, right? I've said that. You know, and, and these women nowadays are having sex before marriage. Um, they're waiting until they're uh, ready, and, and which is not pleasing to God. And, you know, even for the Christian women out there, you have an opportunity to do what's right. You know, the non-Christian women, they can't even do what's right because they don't know what's right. They don't even know right from wrong. But, you know, I'm telling you in this video right now, what is right for you, you know? So we don't have to do... Um, we don't do what is right as Christians, you know, because it, it, it gives us fame or fortune or, or, or status or something, right? We do it to please God. We do it for the sake of just because it's the right thing to do, right? So many times the devil tempts us to sin because he offers us earthly rewards, earthly things that, uh, that you know, oftentimes aren't even worth it, right? And oftentimes we don't even receive anyways. It's just a lie. Like, you know, Women can be a great temptation for men, you know, to pump and dump them or, or simply just look at pornography, you know, just to satisfy yourself, right? Your own selfish lust. But, you know, God says that's not right. God says that doesn't please me, right? And if you lack the faith in God, you will fall into that temptation. Just like all these women, all these feminist women say, you know, I, well, I don't trust my husband to provide for me, so I'm going to go out there and make my own money, right? Even though God told you, hey, trust your husband, you know, support him, submit to him, stay a virgin. Yeah, that's what God says. And, and women say, well, I don't, I, I don't believe in that. I don't, I, don't, I don't trust in that. Well, God says, well, you don't trust in me and you don't have faith in me. So you're on your own, right? Basically. But, you know, here's the beauty of this message, guys. God has given us a great opportunity, you know, to do what is right, to shine the light in the darkness, so maybe you're like me. Maybe you didn't get married young. Maybe you, maybe you uh, wasted your 20s and didn't have enough faith in God. But you know, there's, there's still time to turn it around. You know, you can't stop preaching the truth. You can't stop doing what's right just because you did something wrong in the past, you know. 
nothing's going to please God more if you start doing what's right today. You know what I mean? You, you choose today. You can choose right now, at this second, watching this video. Hey, I'm going to forsake what I've done in the past, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a new leaf. I'm going to change. I'm going to change, right? And, you know, I'm coming up on almost one year now since I've been making these videos, since my woman left me. And you know what? I'm telling you, I've sought, I've sought after the Lord, and I've done uh, what is right. I've got the sin out of my life. I've got the pornography out of my life. And you know what? Persecution hasn't stopped against me. Temptation hasn't stopped against me. People still haven't stopped... Um, making fun of me for living this lifestyle but it's a fight it's a war to do what's right you know it's easy to take the easy road and and do what the world's doing do what everybody else is doing it's hard it's harder to do um what is right what god wants us to do and that's why god says he's going to reward us for doing what's right because it's work and you know i'm stronger now than i've ever been and i want you guys to reap the same rewards that i have you know, so just make the decision, guys. Make the decision to do what's right today. You know, because I'm telling you right now, having an ungodly wo a woman, it's an illusion. You know, it's, it's nothing good, you know. Um, having sin in your life, it's an illusion, you know. It, it might satisfy you for a little bit, but in the long run, you know, you're going to go down. It's not going to be any good for you, and it's fake. You know, so you can go ahead and, and uh, you know, tell the devil, hey, you can tempt me all you want, but I know what you got is just fool's gold. It's all fake. Um, but you know what? Those things, uh, the fertility rate, it's out of your control, right? You can't control that. And when the devil comes and he attacks you and he tempts you and he says, hey, just uh, why don't you get a little sin in your life? It'll be more fun. It'll be more exciting. You know, don't waste your youth. Don't waste your youth, guys. <laughs> you, I mean, other people are doing it in their 20s, right? So why shouldn't you, you know? Hey, that's just the devil trying to steal your soul. That's just, try, that's just him trying to attack you and, and get, you to, get you to stumble and get you to fall and get you to go down to the path of destruction, right? But when the devil comes and he attacks you because... Because if you got your eyes on the prize, if you're following the Lord Jesus Christ, you're obeying the commandments, you got the sin out of your life, right? When the devil comes and he tempts you and he attacks you and tries to and say, hey, you're missing out on something. You're going to say, nah, I ain't missing out on nothing. I got God on my side. You know, you can just remember the words of Jesus. Jesus said in Mark chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. You know, all things are possible. To him that believeth. So put your faith in God. You know, obey him. And when the devil comes to attack you, you can stand fast like a soldier. And you can say, nah, you can't get me. Stand fast, gentlemen. Stand fast. That's my message. Anyways, God bless you guys until next time. And as always, I'm going to give God the last word. And um, I'll see you guys on the next video. This is Sean Alvis signing out. Peace. Oh. Let me see. Uh, I'm going to read from the book of Exodus. Let me just put this down so I can read it. Sorry. I want you guys to hear what God has to say. Sorry. Bible says, Now there rose up... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to read from Exodus chapter 1, verses... Uh, 8 through 21. Here we go. Now there arose a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of, of Israel are more mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they should join our enemies and fight against us. So get them up, out, saith the Lord. Or so get them up out of the land. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasures, cities, um, Phytham and, and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more the people multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with bondage and mortar and, and brick and all manner of services in the field. And all their services wherein they made them serve with rigor. 
And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name one uh, Sapphira and the name the other Pua. And he said, When do ye the office of midwives to the Hebrew women and see uh, upon those stools, if it be a son, ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God. And they, did not the, and they did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have you done this thing and have saved the men children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and delivered air unto the midwives coming unto them. Therefore God dealt with the midwives, and they multiplied and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass, because the, because the midwives feared God, that he made them a house. Amen.